Hello fellow AGD coders and welcome to another video. This is a very quick one but uh, it's a nice little uh, trick that I found out that you might find useful. So some of you may have seen on the Facebook page I was messing about with foreground blocks and in the process I discovered another little trick which I'd like to share with you now. So as you can see here we are using uh, Sprite Ink here and we're coloring our main sprite in red and most of you will be familiar with what happens if you do this uh, and let's take a look so we'll come out and go into the game and uh, as you'll see here the problem will become immediately apparent because yep as you can see most of you be, will be familiar with this uh, you end up painting the town red if you like um, and that's not something we want in our game now I have posted a, a thread a few months back about using an attribute buffer it is quite a good solution very flexible uh, but also a little bit fiddly to implement so this solution I hope is going to be one which is you're going to find uh, a little more simple to use um, one of the other alternatives incidentally of course is to put Sprite Inc. 7 at the top of the code and Sprite Inc. 2 at the bottom but again, it doesn't really yield the kind of results that you would want. So um, what I've done is I've made a little piece of code which bypasses or redirects the sprink command and sets it up so that it will only put sprite ink on the background. So block zero, only block type zero, I should say, not block zero, but block type zero. So that means that when you go over a ledge or something else like that, it will uh, maintain its original color. Okay, so to implement this, it's just a case of uh, loading in this binary here, which I will make available. And uh, as you can see, it's got the number there, 64674. So you load that in, at the, it's just at the top of the memory, quite close to the um, attribute buffer, um, the attribute, the block buffer, I should say, um, which is used to detect block types. And then we have a little poke file here, and uh, we just open that, and we highlight those three pokes, which will redirect the command. So we're now using our own sprite ink command rather than the one within AGD. And as you'll see now, what happens is that we no longer affect anything other than the background itself. Now you may notice here, there, you'll see a little bit of red there that just appeared on the screen there, and that's because that block there hasn't been set to be block uh, anything other than block type 0. This one here, it's turned red. So what we want to do, we'll go into the editor, and um, let's just check if it's, was it this one? No, well, as you can see, this one is a custom block, so that one won't be painted. But uh, this particular block here, by the way, you press E on the new AGDX to immediately edit a block. It's quite handy. And as you can see, that is still type 0. So all we do is we just uh, change it to special 254. And that will mean that um, all of those blocks, they will behave exactly like background blocks, but they won't be affected by the sprite ink now at all. And uh, what I've done in this game is I've gone through uh, most of the blocks and change them as you can see there's quite a few there any that uh, that I don't want to have uh, the, the color affected by the sprite um, that may be affected by the sprite you just change them to 254 and uh, basically it means a background block which is unpaintable uh, so yeah basically um, the normal background blocks any background blocks that you use in your game that you want to have color put them at block 0 type 0 and then for the ones that you want to keep the color, you can put them at uh, type 254. And as you can see here, what that does basically is um, it means that the sprite won't color those blocks. So for example, if I take this one here, it's at 254, let me change it back to zero. And you'll see that, yep, it's affected by the sprite ink. So we'll now go back and uh, again you press E to edit any particular block that you see and uh, we'll change it back and now as you can see it won't be affected by the sprite 
Now, obviously, um, this gives the impression that the characters are kind of a little bit in the background, so it's not an ideal solution. The attribute buffer is probably the best solution because it, it allows you to have the sprite ink uh, dominate the background, and uh, the background will then return to its normal color when the sprite moves away. But it is a quick and easy method by which you can um, color the sprite and have it uh, affect only the areas that you choose to, to be affected. So just to finish up, let's put in a little color cycle here. Just a very common trick that you can use to uh, make the sprite ink change its color randomly. And as you can see there, as we move around, you might use this for some kind of invulnerability potion or something like that, and it's not affecting the rest of the area. It's worth noting here though that it is still coloring the background while it's doing this. It's just only coloring background uh, block zero. So if you have other sprites, they will be affected by this. As you can probably see the little splash there above the, um, the flower if you rewind the video. So you'll need to put sprite ink on all of your sprites if you're going to use this. And uh, bear in mind also the memory at the top, it takes about 90 bytes. So if your memory is lower than 100, then your memory it might be impinging on the, uh, on the code itself. So just keep an eye on the memory and uh, think about that as well up here. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. As I said, it's an alternative to the sprite buffer, uh, the attribute buffer. I think that's probably still the best solution, but this one's nice and easy, so I hope you find it useful. Thanks a lot and happy coding. Bye-bye.